here at the Acoustic Shop channel and we are doing our live Martin walkthrough. The booth is absolutely humming right now. Nam has been humming. Uh, and again, this is going to be a whole bunch of fun because we're back again with Fred, Fred Green. Last year I got, got you in here. I was blown away. I didn't, I will confess, I did not, I knew that who you were. We had a great sure. time talking. Then I found out. This is product development right here. This yes. is the guy right this here. And he was awesome last year. Again, if you guys are watching right now, make sure to like and subscribe. But on top of that, we are monitoring comments right now. So if you see anything or want to know anything about anything in the booth right now, Hinkley is watching it right over here. She's got those on uh, line. So we'd love to cover all those as we go. But what we're going to do today is hang out with Fred. We're going to talk about all the new products. Some of the other things that maybe have been around a little bit longer. We're going to hit this whole booth and kind of just tell everybody what's happening NAM 2023 for the Martin Company and uh, we're starting right over here Fred what do we got well we decided to get into the base world but not in a big way in a small way <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna start with puns I we're see how we're doing it <laughs> it's gonna be a long show <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. Ready. I'm down. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're doing some Triple O Junior bases, essentially based on our Triple O Junior platform. Uh, solid wood, Sapelli back and sides, uh, Sitka tops. Obviously, we're not the first person to do this kind of base. Yeah. Right? So I won't say we're not claiming to be pioneers here. The guys in the product development were working on some stuff. They came to me and they said, hey, we want to do a small base. I said, well, okay. You know, I'm going to give you some room here. Let's try and do a small base. But if it's not better than what other people are doing, if it's not up to our standards, I'm going to kill it. Uh, okay. Fair enough, right? Oh, that's absolutely fair. I mean, this is not the first thing. This is not the first time Martin's done bases. They've done oh. bases before correct. based off of the jumbo body, correct? Correct. And in the 16 series, just regular long-scale bases. Exactly. But the issue with acoustic long-scale bases is they just feel very, very awkward. They're they incredibly do. neck heavy. They do. Right. And, and frankly, they just don't project that well. And this has been a trend that has been happening, like you said. Right. This is not the first time, but a lot of people are liking that smaller scale base for an acoustic base. Super with the pickups that everybody's coming up with nowadays, you can get a really natural acoustic right. tone right. plugged in. So. And actually, we had a lot of guitar players who recorded at home and they just wanted a bass they could play. This is a really great bass to play if you're really primarily a guitar player and kind of sit around and do one. That makes perfect sense. So part of what makes it interesting for us is we developed our own strings for this. Did you? I was going to ask about that. Correct. And I know other people have done It's a nylon four string, so we have a lot of nylon strands and then wrapped in a phosphor bronze wrap on it. And they obviously perform well for other companies but also, but what we found when we used their strings was we felt like the tension was too light. So the strings kind of felt a little too floppy. A little floppy, yep. That's right? what I was going to say. rolled around on your hands a little bit. Sure. So our team really went to work hard, and we actually came up with a higher tension string than what most people are using. And we found that that really helped the projection of the bass quite a bit, really upped the sound. And actually, when we use the strings on, on other people's basses, it really helped them sound better also. So the string is a big part of what makes this work. That's awesome. 24-inch scale. So it's super comfortable to play. It's one of those things, once you start noodling around on it, you kind of can't put it down. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun. We offer it with a cutaway. We offer it in the Sunburst. Also. I like the Sunburst a lot. Sunburst that's really cool. great. Same price both ways. So um, that's going to be, though, an actual Dread Junior. Correct. So you said the Triple O is triple here. Triple O, yeah. The, the Dread, Dread over junior. here. Awesome. Right. And it's 49 whatever flavor you choose to get in. We worked with Fishman. Fishman did a nice little pickup for us, made some adjustments. Uh, calibrated for bass and it sounds fantastic. Makes perfect yeah. sense. Uh, now, just out of curiosity, and again, you, however you want to answer, you talked about the new strings. Are those going to be compatible with most other companies? Yes. So you can use those you on? You can use those on other people's bases. That'll you, be a good thing so to if do. If you already have a bass like this, and maybe you're saying, well, I don't need to buy another one. Maybe I have one from another company. Try the strings. I think you'll find the performance of the bass you currently have will be much improved. Well, that, it makes sense. Like you said, there's been a lot of bass players that have talked about that. There's a kind of floppiness, a little bit of delay, uh, and that pull that yes. ele that a electric bass player is not comfortable or used to. Correct. And so a little more immediate response when you have the tension on this. Makes ring. sense. Makes yeah. perfect sense to me. Just trying to be smart about there it. There you go. That's awesome. All right. So what are we going to move on to next? I think what we're going to do is we're going to walk over and we're going to. We say we go look at the Bitcoin guitar. That's let's do that. Spot. That's pretty cool. All right, All right well, we're gonna go come. That. We're gonna find our way over we're here, guys. Go over so here in the corner. squeeze around. We'll sneak our way. <laughs> All 
So this one's interesting to me already, Fred, because the first thing I see is big sold. What yes. I want to know, was it bought with cryptocurrency? <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was not. It was not bought with cryptocurrency. No, so you're telling me, yeah, I was going to say, is Martin accepting crypto these days? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. So this is actually the project that Chris Martin, Chris had this idea. He wanted to play around with the idea of just doing a guitar based on a Bitcoin. Um, so we just put some of the motifs in there and just kind of showed off a little bit of some of our pearl work. And then up in the peg head, you can see that we actually uh, encapsulated and then laid a gold Bitcoin token. Uh, my running joke on this is it's blockchain technology, the newest form of currency, and we're showcasing it with the oldest form of currency gold. Oh, currency gold, <laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear you. I like that. I mean, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, like I said, I, so my guess is, is Chris a uh, cryptocurrency uh, investor or big into it? or No, I think he, it's more fascination with it. And just sort of the fascination of um, the ups and downs of it, and you know, Chris follows business and obviously what's going on in the world, and I think he just finds it a, a, an interesting concept. Some people are into it, some people aren't. Some people think it's kind of a, a scheme. Other people are think it's the future, and I think he just wanted to highlight this sort of period of time in the world and what's going. What is the top on this, by the way? I'm seeing all these little bear claw types. Is it an Addy top, or uh, do you know? I think it's actually Engelman. It does yeah. say Engelman, it yeah, looks like to me. Yeah, it is Very cool. Yeah, it's a really, really cool piece. Yeah. And, uh, it's just a fun, a fun piece. Well, you guys have done that every you know, every year. There's always a fun, cool, uh, unique guitar just Correct. to see it, you just know. To and it, just to have something. I have to say, I, one time when I got to do the tour, I know this nobody cares, but I got to do the Peacock guitar. Chris oh, actually yes. brought it out to me. This was the scariest. I was up there, we were playing on tour, and, got, and he brought it out to me, and he said, you want to play it? I got to play the Peacock guitar, yeah, cool. which is gorgeous, you know, so I don't know if he regretted that immediately or not, but uh, that was really, really cool, too. I so. had a good story on that. Do you? I want to hear it. All right, here's my good story. When I first started at Martin, my daughter was very small, and they had, like, the bring your dad to school, you know, show him what he does. So I said, oh, can I have a guitar to take to show everybody? They gave me the Peacock Are guitar. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was scared to death. I, I, I would see that. guitar costs more than my house. Yes. And then I show up, I show the Peacock guitar, and all the other dads go, really? Really? <laughs> really? Thanks for making us look good. If you haven't yet done it, you need to check out the Peacock guitar. It's on. It's in many, many books all over online. There's like real diamonds encrusted into oh, it and inlaid and it's over the top. gorgeous inlays all the way through. So anyway, Crazy. Martin always does really cool things. Bitcoin is the newest one. Uh, really, really cool. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about another cool product. All right, next, I think we're going to go to the one that's probably gotten the most amount of conversation online. Let's go talk about the Sat. The new satin finishes, so follow us, guys. Yeah. Check this out, excuse us. <laughs> As you guys can see, it's a hop in place here today. It's a hop in place. <laughs> <laughs> I need four of Sorry. Have it back. We're still, we'll give it back, I promise. I promise we will. <laughs> All right, so satin finish. Brand new product for Martin this year. Correct. And in two different versions of the satin finish, correct? Correct. So essentially we're doing a satin D18, D28. It's everything you love in the 1828, exact same specs as the regular full gloss version. Uh, everything else is exactly the same. However, we're just doing three different finish packages. Three different finishes. Three different finish packages for each one. So obviously the one that's probably getting a lot of attention is the Street Legend piece. Uh, the way we're doing this, I know that's a lot of the conversation. Hey, sure. what's going on? We've had a lot of people say, is this photo finish, like the old days, where they would print it on paper or on some kind of film, and then they would glue it on to the top. That is not what's going on here. What we've actually done is we've uh, purchased a technology and machine that allows us to take digital images and then apply those digital images onto the top using just micro spray technology. So it's, it's using a finish to do it then? Correct, it's actually a water-based uh, color finish. Really? Yeah, sustainable finish, and it's just this tiny spray nozzle, like printer type style. You lay it in a bed, and then you can take that image that you got and then apply that image directly onto the wood of the guitar. So what's cool about this, and I was looking at this a little bit earlier, is you have this finish and it feels smooth. It looks it like it doesn't. It does. I mean, and and it will fool you. It will absolutely fool you uh, into thinking that you've got some sort of uh, you know wear pattern here. But uh, just for everybody to know, the back is just the standard satin finish, absolutely. so you will see that. 
um, as a standard, and it's a D18. So full mahogany, Sitka spruce top. Scallop braces. Scallop braces. And they sound great, too. I was it's, playing it yesterday yeah. just for the heck it of it. Sounds just like a D18. Yeah. But as you all know, that's not for everybody, Correct. right? Right. That, that is not for everybody. <laughs> like I said, this is the image off of one of the guitars in our museum. Is it? Yes. This is actually uh, the guitar we own that was played by uh, Kurt Cobain. Some people know who that is. I, yeah, I don't like a couple guy, of you guys. <laughs> but it's a guitar that was formerly owned a girlfriend of his, and he played the guitar for quite a while. And we purchased that guitar. Awesome. But we, we do, we realize this isn't for everybody. We know some people want a plain top. This is a 28 version with a plain top. Same satin finish in a 28. And then so you have also, this, he's looking at the other 18, yep. but it'll be the same idea, just an 18 without all the wear pattern and all that. And then what is unique, I thought, is the 28 Street Legend version of it Correct. is a different look, which I think is really, really cool. That so, was on purpose. Um, what we found as we're going through the museum and we're looking at all the different instruments is that the 18s tend to be far more worn than the 28s. And I guess, you know... Do you have a theory on that? I, lower price point, that people kind of beat them up and then they sort of trade it up into the 28. Yeah. So that was kind of our feeling on it. So again, same idea. Correct. Full rosewood back and sides, set, uh, Sitka spruce top. Just a different pattern, different, and and you're right. I mean, one thing that we as uh, history, I'm not a, I, I'm an old guy now, but I remember when I started, uh, 28s, that's all anybody wanted in right. that world. It was 28s, 18s in the vintage world were like nobody really cared all that right. much, and it was weird because all of a sudden the 18s did become very very popular and are now you know as sought after as a lot of the 28s. But you're correct. I get that theory of people really paid attention to the 28s because they were a higher end model. Correct. So they took care of them a little bit more. Didn't quite beat them up. I think the 18s got handed down a lot. The kids got the 18s. Dad took the 28s in many cases. Yep. Got a question? Will the wear patterns change no. throughout? No. They're all going to be the same exact wear pattern. Now, from year to year, year we'll to year? start playing with the different wear patterns and changing them over. So it's basically going to come down to them. Yeah. Are they, are they going to change? That's up to you guys. Right. You guys want to see other ones, then we'll talk, then they'll probably talk about doing other ones. Exactly. So I think this is a really cool product. I know when you guys sent out the press release, everybody in the shop was like, I, I dig that. I dig that. Um, but I, uh, like you said, not everybody loves. It's not for everybody. But this gives you the opportunity if you really want to kind of get into that, that relic look. And on the acoustic side, it's a very expensive proposition to kind of get into the physical relicking. This gives you an opportunity to get into these guitars at a, at a much more affordable price. In fact, all of these guitars, uh, this one, 20, they're all $400 less than the full gloss counterpart. Which it makes sense. It right. should be, right? Exactly. So, so this really gives you the opportunity to kind of get into these products. And we also offer it in an amber burst package so whether you're getting the plane an amber burst or the street legends package same price okay so there's no upcharge to go to these that's awesome really different. So that's I'll, awesome so it's not like a add-on feature to get the relic it's not or the amber burst that's no, really cool we, we want we want guitar players to get inspired by the guitar and we're not trying to tell you what guitar inspires you 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 pick yeah right if you like absolutely. it plain if you like it sunburst if you like it relic you choose the one that fits whatever gets gets your motor running so to speak and we're trying to give you something at a price point that allows you to get the sonic engine of an 18 and a 28, and by rolling back the prices. Makes perfect sense. 10 years. Yeah, and the price, like I said, we'll hit up real quick. $23.99 on the D18s. Correct. $27.99 on the D28s. Um, so, you know, again, it's an affordable, you know, Martin guitar, and, and it's a full D18. It's Absolutely. not like you guys created a, a 16 version or nope. a lesser, you know, model. This is the full D18s and 28s. You could just take a 28 or an 18 as it's running down the line before it gets in the finishing department and just convert it over to this just based on the finish package. Exactly. And, the same so it's guitar. the same guitar, yeah. That, and I think that's important for you guys to know, too, is they're not, again, building a new model of a 28 or an 18 for that. Yeah. Is yes. the wear, wear pattern covered yeah. in nitro? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, we're going to repeat the questions a, as we go. That's okay. It's, it's a catalyzed nitro uh, finish, our same satin finish that we usually use, a 30 sheen. 
finish. So what you what would a, normally feel like on the back of the neck of, a, of an 18 or 20. One of the things he pointed out to me, I talked to him earlier about this, and I think this is going to be cool for you viewers out there too, is it's a regular finish. So if it wears out, it's not like all of a sudden you're going to get this white spot and, you know, some sort of weird coloration. It's going to get, it's going to be the wood that is naturally right. under there, going to be right under there. So Just if you're like wearing paint. it, it will end up kind of getting some of that brownish color because of the right. wear figures that are doing it anyway, right? Exactly. So, you know. Yeah, they, it'll age just like you, you're just kind of getting a little bit of a head start. Did you just say age like me? I think no. you just, I think you just, <laughs> like no, you want it. I didn't finish my film. <laughs> I knew you were going to get me before it's this was over. <laughs> I knew you were going to get me. Again, uh, we're getting lots of questions on that because I do think this is going to be a hot seller for you guys. I'm assuming for the weekend, this has been one of the bigger orders. It's, it's been uh, probably products. the most talked about piece. And when people walk into the booth, you watch everyone walk in, the first thing they do is they go right to this guitar and they go, they want to touch it. They want to touch and they it. They want to feel it because their eyes are saying, "Oh wow!" But then they're sort of like, "What's going on?" I'm gonna admit it fooled me. I had to come in here and put my hands on it I'll, to, I'll you, to do it. The, the story was we were just working on Sunburst Finish, and we saw what a good job it was doing. Uh, the new technology was doing to, to apply the finish. And I said, "I wonder if we just took a picture of an old guitar would it work?" So I had an old guitar, my, uh, like a beat up old uh, HD28 in my office, and we just sort of did that. And when they brought it in and showed it to me, I was like, oh, God, I can't believe how good that looks. I said, we got to do this. This is yeah. too much fun. I love it. I said, people will blow up over it, but we got to do it. There is. So uh, what are we, we'll talk about. This is the darker stuff. We have Valley. And then we have another one that goes even lower than that. And so we're spreading those out. So the dark stuff is reserved for the authentics because we think that consumer was looking for that. But more of a Brazilian look. Correct. And as you pointed out, this is. Uh, more physically aged, obviously, than the other ones. So this is the aging most people would be more familiar with, with the cracked finish, yep. the dings and the dents. But not beat up. But not beat up. And we were having this conversation earlier. Yeah. You know, I thought it was a really good point that you brought up, which is our position on, on, on relicking is we want the guitar to feel like a very lightly played guitar that you maybe have stumbled across or found in somebody's attic or found under the bed. And just like, like, wow, where did this come from? It's hardly been played at all, but it still looks like an old guitar. It's had, it was treated really well. I like that. Look, yeah, that we're approach. not looking for the guy that's gouged out the pieces with holes all in it, and wood chips all over the place. <laughs> Which Pop does lips. happen, by the way. I've seen those guitars, yeah. and I've seen the relics too. But uh, yeah, like you said, I. I never cared much for a guitar that looked like somebody beat it with a chain and did all that kind of stuff. And especially, like you said, a 3728, if it was really around right now, some of those got beat up, but most of those, if they're still around, they were taken care of. Exactly. And that makes it more realistic than the other side of that. And from a manufacturer's standpoint, when you see a guitar that's overly beat up and you're a consumer, you come in and look at it, you start to wonder, is there structural problems? Is there problems? problems? Is this thing getting ready to crack up the top? Is there problems? Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to replicate cracks on toms and backs and stuff like that. That just seems like the wrong way it to do, go. It does seem like it. So I'm going to play it because Please. I did not get to do that yesterday um, just because I want to. And again, hey, if you're joining us, we're doing a full walkthrough of the Martin booth right now. And we are taking comments live. So if you have any questions, any comments, let us know here. Absolutely cool guitar, very punchy. I'm gonna try to lean it toward my mic so you guys can hear it. That's that Martin Authentic sound right there, it's, and it sounds great. Now, one thing we were talking about, the Guatemalan Rosewood, you guys are really championing that, um, yes. and it's partly because Madagascar is becoming so much more, It's it, there's some really good discussions going on with that, with how it's harvested, and even though there's paperwork, there's some sketchy yes. stuff, and, and we appreciate that. Stuff. And, and you guys have done this before, too, which I, I admire about Martin. Sinker Mahogany, you guys yes. really championed that and made sure Correct. to the point where everybody really gets into the into that. And Guatemalan, I think, is going to be one of those where Martin is tr setting the trend again to let everybody know this is not a sacrifice wood. This is not something Correct. that we're doing just because, uh, you know, we don't want to get mad.
Madagascar anymore. Right. Um, this is a, a genuine piece, and I appreciate you guys making that move. We do Thanks. a whole shop sustainable thing, That's and we awesome. talk about sustainable woods and those kind of deals, and that is a really good thing to give another option out there for those Maddie lovers that are out there. This is a really good, oh, a, uh, and it's not like we're amazing. sacrificing anything to You're do not. it. Absolutely. It's an amazing tone wood, and it's a really well-managed core system that we're getting it from. We're working with Hearn Hardwood on procuring this wood for us, and they do a fantastic job. And so we're, we're proud, and you're going to see a lot of a lot more sustainable stuff coming from the company as you see a lot more pressure on some of these exotic tone woods. And we're, we're very conscious at Martin. We understand as soon as we say, hey, we're going in a certain direction, everybody's point kind of jumps in, and then all of a sudden that species gets a lot more pressure. Right, and so we're trying to be really careful and understanding where everybody's And going. I definitely appreciate that, because you guys are. You're really good at championing these new uh, tone woods and making sure everybody, because everybody trusts Martin. I mean, it's been around. You guys are the, you know, for this kind of guitar, this is, you guys are the ones, you know? Yeah, so thanks. when you when you set that, that standard up there, it lets everybody else know, yeah, it's real, it's real, so. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sucking up. That's what I'm really doing. <laughs> Stay here, don't even go. I'm gonna All right. grab a guitar. All right, he's gonna grab us some guitars. Again, guys, thanks for joining us on this live walkthrough of the Martin Guitar Booth here at NAMM 2023. We're here with Fred Green. This has been awesome. If you've not liked it, subscribe, do that. And also, again, comment. We're watching it. Hinkley's right now checking it out. If you got any questions, we got Fred here, so this is the best time to do this. So, so all right. this is our CEO 10 model. It's detuned at the moment, so I don't know what was going on. <laughs> it's just got a special tuning in yeah, it. Yeah, it's a very floppy <laughs> tuning. No, no. Uh, this was designed by our CEO, uh, Thomas Ripson, who joined the company two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. Uh, so we, we have a tradition of doing CEO models with Chris. Yeah. Right? So we have a new CEO. He wanted to do a model, which is fantastic. I think that is fantastic. And he's a great, he's actually a really good guitar player. Really enjoys. So he wanted to do a triple O, which we did. Once again, Guatemala and Rosa, but now you can see. That other color. The other colors that come in that we're using. So we're trying to use the wood regardless of color and just trying to determine where they're best. Well, it still looks gorgeous. Oh, it just doesn't have that Brazilian look. Well, right. although there are some Brazilian sets that have kind of leaned a little more this it's color. It's getting lighter and lighter. Yes. Absolutely. Exactly. So what, what, just out of curiosity, you were saying there's the three different, the hillside, the valley. What would this one be considered, do you know? I think this would be more like in the valley. Valley? Yeah. As they get lighter, we're kind of moving out. I'm learning it as I'm coming. This has been, uh, for me, I've been trying to learn more over the past year and a half or two about this, especially since we talked about it. So. Exactly. Um, inlaid pick guard. I love inlaid pick guards. Yeah, I think that's probably why they don't want people playing it. <laughs> to scratch it all up. But the inlaid pick guard looks fantastic on this. Uh, maple binding on the body. Um, Thomas is from Germany, so we did the German spruce top. A little harken back to his Makes uh, sense. His I love it. And I thought it turned out really nice. It's so the whole really guard is guitar. inlaid, right? It's flat? Correct. Yeah, all the way through. All yeah. the way through. Very, very cool. Yeah. I love that look. A lot of work. A little bit of fun, though. Absolutely. We're trying to do things the hard way. It's Martin. <laughs> uh, but a, a really beautiful, beautiful piece. Absolutely. Limited edition. Just for this year. So this is going to be a, it's not just, it's a production piece. It's it not a just a one-off. It's Good. not just a one-off. You can purchase this guitar. Absolutely. Very, very cool. So that's the new CEO one right there. Correct. What else do we want to look at? Well, I tell you what. We have a lot of customs. If we want to look at some customs, it's a little crowded. Are you okay? Just sort of barge it in. We'll grab one or two, and uh, right. if you don't mind. No problem. We'll be grabbing. All right. So again, thank you all for joining us as a walkthrough. We're working with Fred Green. Grant. Fred is awesome. This has been so much fun for me, checking out a couple guitars. He may bring us one over here in the custom shop. Martin does a really good job with some great custom guitars, and that's some of what come out of is that custom shop, and then sometimes they're able to bring it into the uh, new world, so this is gorgeous. It's a gorgeous little <laughs> I love double it. O cola. I love it. A little I eye love candy it. for everybody. I love it. Beautiful little piece. Slot this is head. my favorite way to see an all Koa guitar is double O's, 12 fret editions, That's which really Martin it. did it. Uh, the, right. I have a friend of mine that ended up finding one of these uh, in a beat up state, but uh, she ended up finding a original one that was a square neck converted. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. So. Yeah, that that's that's the look. Beautiful piece. Sounds good. Typical Koa sound. 
Martin is doing a really good job. Again, I was telling you, I was telling them while you were away about how you guys some of are working so many cool things in the custom department that sometimes works its way into production lines and things. That's kind of where some of these VGS and uh, that's how we work it. You're exactly right. We kind of do it at a smaller scale through custom. Uh, gives us an opportunity to see how people react, right? To see what their interests are. Um, and then we try to work it into the regular production line if we can do that. Sure. That's always, that's always the way. And this is gorgeous. They have great tone woods here. A lot of the dealers that are here are going through these tone woods. And again, someday, we're hoping, uh, the Goose Chop will help you with your custom guitar. Someday. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to pressure we're him. Trying, but we're trying. <laughs> we're trying. We're going to make it. But uh, if you haven't ever got a chance to do that, custom shop through your lo local Martin dealer, that's a really, really cool thing to do. Yes, got a question. Say it again. Any new, I'll ask. I know they got the new bass ones. When Fred gets back, we will ask about new mandolin or guitar strings that may have come out. Fred will have a good idea here in just a minute. So I won't forget that one. You, whoever it is that's coming in here right now. Nope. Cooley brought us another real cool one. Before we get started, we had a question on the internet. Is there any new mandolin or guitar strings that came out this year, or do you know? No, I do not believe there are. Okay, nothing new. Well, there's a new guitar string, a Kovar string, yes. A, a what string? Kovar, using cobalt. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Tell us about the sound characteristics of that. I would say it's somewhere, I would put it in between our, our Monel string. Mm -hmm. And a phosphor bronze. It's really? Sort of, it's sort of a tweener piece. It has I'm a interested. Silver, it has the silver look of the retro string. It, it's probably a little more immediate sounding yeah. than the retro, but certainly a warmer sound than the phosphor bronze. I'm really interested in that. I always, I love the tone of the Monel strings when I put them on. I, for some reason, didn't. Uh, I killed them for, fairly quick. That was just me. So I'm really curious about that in between because I did love that warm, rich tone that happened in that front side yes. of that. So yes. I think it's a really cool string. Cool. We'll, we'll get you back. <laughs> I love that. I will definitely do that. All right, tell us what else you found. So we have another uh, another small body custom here, high altitude, alpine top. Alpine spruce. Yes. Absolutely beautiful. love it. Cocobolo. Beautiful sets. Again, custom shop stuff. If you guys get to see custom shop Martin guitars, this is always a treat. Every Co single time. Coa binding on the sides. Really, really, really pretty. Very really gorgeous cool. up around the top. I love Coco Bolo. Just I visual, do too. visually, to me, it's the most exciting wood. It is dense. It's heavy. It is heavy, and and companies have to work with it to get its tonal properties Absolutely. out. Absolutely, you <laughs> just can't throw it on a guitar and expect it to work. Uh, but I, I like it with the Alpine Spruce. I like I, that it would look. make sense to me. It I works can see together that. really well, so it's a very very fun guitar. Very gorgeous. Well, cool. cool. Well, Fred, I, I'll let you go because I know you got other things in here, and I want to thank everybody who joined us in here. Fred's been awesome. He is such a cool dude. I enjoyed Thanks, you from last nice year. I mean, I, I just loved it. And uh, again, this will be still available for you guys online. If you guys have any questions, uh, put them on here. We will continue to answer them. If I don't have an answer, I got this guy's email address. I'll hit him up. Hit me up. <laughs> I will do it. We'll, we'll get an answer for no you secrets. no matter what. No uh, it has been awesome to see the new products. Again, I think you guys did an amazing job here at NAM, uh, coming in with a big booth and doing what you guys are great. It is important. And it's I'm important. glad important. that the consumers get to see what you guys are doing as well as the dealers. I think that's the best part. So again, thank you so much. For Appreciate it. Guys, we will see you with more lives throughout 2023 NAM. This is John from the Acoustic Shop. We will see you guys later. Thank you all.